Is cold plunging a giant hoax? Is it a scientific joke that everyone just wants to tout on social media because it looks cool? We have to look at data to really understand this. It's not fair to say it doesn't work because we've looked at one study, or it's not fair to say that it does work because Liver King or someone that's super jacked does it all the time. That's just not fair. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna break down sort of pros and cons in all the data so we can understand what it really is good for and what's just a giant social media hoax. I put a link down below for 30% off Thrive Market. So if you wanna get your groceries delivered to your doorstep and get them a heck of a lot cheaper, and be able to get an additional 30% off discount and a $50 free gift, definitely check them out. So they are an online grocery store. So they're membership based. So what happens is you log in and then you can sort by different diet type. You can sort by keto, you can sort by paleo. You can then just have everything shipped to your doorstep and you get it within a couple of days. It is literally a game changer for your time, for your wallet, but the best thing is that the foods that they have there are vetted out. So I definitely recommend it. It's like having your own personalized grocery store like right there in your living room. So that link is down below, top line of the description underneath this video. I'm gonna start with the first hoax thing. I've seen this piece of literature floating around Instagram, people saying that they're doing cold plunging for autophagy. Now, in case you don't know, autophagy is cellular recycling. It's a process our body goes through when we are fasting, when we're in a caloric deficit, when we're exercising, and it's a great thing, okay? It's where our body consolidates, our cells consolidate, and get rid of useless components and useless organelles that are no longer advantageous to survival. So it gets rid of those and consumes them, it like eats them. So the theory is that, okay, if I cold plunge, it's gonna accelerate autophagy. And this comes from a paper that was published in iScience where it had subjects go in four degrees Celsius water for 72 hours. And they saw an increase in brown adipose tissue, which is really wicked cool stuff, autophagy. So they saw basically fat tissue autophagy where the brown adipose tissue was just getting stronger and better at dissipating calories as heat. Well, there's two major flaws of this study. One, it was rats. Two, it was 72 hours in four degrees Celsius water. Yeah, that's gonna do something. It's gonna do something. Now, what I will say is that it is kind of interesting because there was a pretty significant increase in autophagy. So I will say more research needs to be done because this is fascinating. But to say that it's going to trigger autophagy when you go in your ice bath for three minutes, that's a far-fetched statement. Let's talk recovery because ice baths have been studied for recovery a lot in athletes. And there's a reason why professional athletes use them. The NFL uses them, they all use them, right? Well, if you look at a meta-analysis that took a look at 20 studies, you see that the subjective improvement in delayed onset muscle soreness is clear in all 20 studies. Like all subjects basically claimed subjective improvement in soreness. That is tremendous and that can't be discounted. And then there is also an improvement in their rating of perceived exertion. So they were able to like push it harder. They weren't literally stronger, but they were able to push it harder. What's going on here? Well, it could be the mental aspect, like building resiliency so you can push harder. It could reduce inflammation so the pain is reduced, but no one really knows there. But what we also notice is that the following day, there's reductions in creatine kinase levels. Creatine kinase is associated with muscle breakdown. So higher creatine kinase, the harder you essentially worked and broke down tissue. So lower CK means that you recovered better. Well, that's kind of cool, but it's almost all subjective with the exception of the objective CK data. Let's look at some more hard data. There's a study published in the American Journal of Physiology. Okay, it had subjects do high intensity training, like really high intensity work. And then after that, they had them do 10 minutes of passive recovery or 10 minutes of cold water immersion. Then two hours later and four hours later, had them train fairly hard again there was no improvement, zero improvement in the cold water immersion group. It did not help them recover faster versus just sitting down in regular temperature. What's interesting is that the study even titled this in a weird way. They titled it suggesting that cold water immersion improves recovery when the actual study shows literally no improvement. So it's bizarre how we kind of are manipulating even the titles of things to get clicks into studies now that don't even have the outcome that the title says the outcome is. It's wild. So anyhow, let's look at more data. This one was published in Frontiers in Sports and Active Living and it is a relatively new study. And it took a look at the effect of cold immersion on just overall recovery and strength adaptation. 
We know from other literature that cold immersion will lower your inflammatory response. It will lower IL-6. That is good in some cases, but not always good for athletes because after a workout, you want inflammation. So the theory that floats around there is like, okay, cold plunges reduce inflammation and that makes it so you don't recover. Fair point, actually a valid point, but it goes deeper than that. What this study found is that it seemed to impair the strength adaptation in anaerobic people, people that were training anaerobically, but it did not impair any adaptation in endurance work. So if you're like a runner or something like that, doing lots of endurance work, you might get some benefit out of a cold plunge that doesn't have any detrimental effect to your training. But if you're training for strength, we definitely see that. Now, additionally, there seems to be a blunting of the anabolic signaling. So that is the signal that allows protein synthesis to occur. Cold plunging, you're actually making it so that protein synthesis may not occur as well, thereby blunting hypertrophy and blunting the recovery. That still needs more flushing out, but very strong when we look at the other pieces too. So what do we take out of this as far as recovery is concerned? Do we take the subjective literature or do we take the hard data? I think this is in the eye of the beholder or the plunger in this case. If you feel like you're getting a benefit out of it and it allows you to train harder, then there's no reason not to. But if you're a very data-oriented person and you're concerned with that, probably just knowing that is gonna change your perception of what the cold plunge does to you, doesn't it? Like once I learned that it doesn't work as well on data, suddenly it doesn't work as well for me. Suddenly it doesn't make me get not sore anymore. It's kind of interesting how that works. I think the bottom line is finding a healthy balance there. So maybe don't do it every day, maybe do it in lieu of workouts as a form of recovery versus trying to force recovery right after a hard workout where it might be detrimental. Let's talk weight loss because this is probably the biggest one to poke holes at. I have seen just this morning two Instagram reels of people talking about how they've lost body fat from cold plunging. Okay, maybe they just didn't have an appetite because they were so freaking cold afterwards and they didn't eat more, I don't know. Anyhow, let's look at the data. The European Journal of Applied Physiology had published a paper that suggested that when you were in uh, some cold water immersion at 14 degrees Celsius, there was a 350% increase in metabolic rate. This is not little, like that's two to three X your you know, metabolic rate. So you're obviously burning more calories, but what's wild is there is like no data whatsoever that shows that cold plunging increases weight loss. Cold immersion, like as far as like cooler temperatures chronically, yes, but cold plunging, no. No data that I have seen that suggests weight loss or fat loss. So that's what's interesting though, because there are other papers that show there's an increase in metabolic rate. So maybe it's just happening so fast and so abruptly, and there's other counter-regulatory measures that are making it not have an impact on weight loss. So there's something there that still needs to be investigated, but to say that it makes you lose weight is not fair. So with that, we look at like what's happening because brown adipose tissue is this fat that burns calories as heat and cold exposure is supposedly going to increase your brown adipose tissue activation and the beijing turning into it. What that means is that when you eat food, you'll incinerate some of that food as heat. So it would imply that cold plunging would increase this. Well, let's look at some data to see what's going on here. They looked at Wim Hof, Iceman Hof, right? Does crazy stuff, sits in cold water, does bizarre things. He's got a twin brother. They looked at both of them, they share the same genealogy. So they looked at their brown adipose tissue. They had them sit in cold water, they had them exposed to regular temperature. They found that they had the same level of brown adipose tissue activation. Even though Wim Hof is exceptionally trained in cold water therapy and does it all the time, cold water immersion, and his brother is not. His brother's a regular dude, Wim Hof is a maniac. Maniac didn't have any different brown adipose tissue than not maniac, showing that A, Wim Hof and his brother are probably genetic freaks, but B, Wim Hof's training in cold exposure didn't change his brown adipose tissue any. But the data is quite strong when you look at like 55 to 60 degree temperatures ambient and the increase in brown adipose tissue over long like six, seven, eight, 10 hour periods. So just turn your thermostat down or hang out with your shirt off by the pool when it's 55 degrees. You're probably gonna get more brown adipose tissue effect there. But that does not mean, because hear me out, that there is not a metabolic benefit. 
I wanna wrap this up with something wicked, and I hope you've been sticking with me on this video because now you get the real treat. There was a study published in Arctic Medical Research way back in 1995 that looked at like 11 subjects up in the Baltic, and some of them were cold exposure trained, some of them were not, but they spent between two and 10 minutes in the Baltic Sea in really cold water for two and a half months, okay? They did it every day for two and a half months for two to 10 minutes. What they found is that the people that were not adjusted to cold temperature had a big spike in glucose while they were in the water. But afterwards, everyone's glucose came down. And get this, afterwards, everyone's insulin levels went down about 50%. Huge metabolic improvement in insulin levels. Back that up with a study that's published in the Journal of Aging and Physical Activity, and they found that two times per week, cold exposure did improve insulin sensitivity and decrease insulin resistance. We don't know mechanisms here, but this is where the data is a little bit stronger. For glycemic control, there seems to be something happening there. Maybe your body sucks up glucose eventually, or as a, again, a counter-regulatory measure. Maybe it helps reset stuff. Maybe the adrenaline effect has an impact on insulin. I couldn't begin to tell you why, but that data is interesting and definitely need to see more there. So as far as glycemic control is concerned, it's good. As far as weight loss, I think indirectly it could have an effect, but to say that cold plunging is revving up your metabolism 350% is irresponsible. So at the end of the day, you do you. I'll see you tomorrow.